So today we are going to be testing out our new 14 inch barrel house cooker and we're going to be doing that with some of our ribs out of this last hog that we just did. And I am going to do my semi-famous rub uh, on these ribs and I'm going to take you through it step by step because while the recipe varies, it's mostly the same each time, so you're pretty safe. So, um, we're getting ready to rub these ribs. Mike just lit the fire outside and uh, unboxed the new 14 inch barrel house cooker, which is supposed to be really good for doing ribs, so we're going to test that theory out with some baby backs. Um, I was very pleased to find a couple of koozies in the box there, and these koozies are kind of cool because they have magnets built in them. Kind of cool, got some, got some swag in there, so one of these days when we do our koozies, I think they need magnets. Okay, so we had a few herbs from the garden that were left over from a little snack we made last night after we were done butchering birds. So I kind of just chopped these up. There's a little bit of chive, there's a little bit of mint, a little bit of thyme, um, a little bit of basil, just a little extra something to add some flavor in there, just something from the garden, no big deal. That's not in the regular plain old recipe, I guess, technically, but there you have it. So first thing to start your rub with is you're going to make sure that you have this yellow mustard, which I know sounds weird, but any plain yellow mustard, that's what you're going to use to actually coat the meat with, and I'll show you guys how I do that when we get to that point. But that's really kind of your first ingredient because that's going to be important to making the rub stick. So the first thing we're going to do is add our sugar. So depending on how many racks of ribs you're doing, um, I'm going to do kind of a medium sized amount right now because I'm doing two racks of baby back. So I'm going to start off with um, two cups of brown sugar. And I actually maybe should have grabbed a larger bowl now that I'm looking at this. Because I just realized I grabbed a small bowl and not the big bowl. My kitchen assistant, uh, Sir Michael, is going to go grab me. Don't put that in there. Just tell me, not, just tell me what to do. Don't tell me what to do! Boo! You do you, I do me. Just saying. That's really big. That's what she said. Alright, I need that though. Thank you. Alright, hold on. Okay. So two cups of brown sugar, we're gonna do that. And uh, you can use uh, coconut sugar too. I don't have any of that right now, so I'm going with what I have. This is kind of leftover from uh, my baking season this winter. So two cups of brown sugar. That should be about right. So that should about do it for that. Okay. <laughs> so we're skilled like that. That's what almost 13 years of marriage will do for you. You can throw sugar at each other. Is that what it is? So, I got some brand new paprika. It's wrapped in plastic. Literally. Literally. Alright. See, people ask me if my nails slow me down. They're actually a tool. I use them for things. Just saying. So we need a cup of paprika. I know that sounds intense. I know that sounds like a lot. The first time I made this, I was like, that's a lot of paprika, and it is, but it is and it's not, so. Well, that was kind of my fault. Now, it calls for five tablespoons. This recipe is a recipe that we got from somewhere, I forget, and I tweaked it, but I'm going off of, like, because I know you guys like measurements, I'm basing it off of these measurements to start with, and then I'm also adding some stuff to it that I've tweaked it to make it my own. So five tablespoons of ground black pepper, I don't measure it, I just do it. You could use the regular black pepper if you like that better. Um, Frankie doesn't like a lot of black pepper, so I'm actually not going to put the whole amount in. I'm just going to put some. She doesn't mind it on these ribs though, but I still don't do the full amount, just because she gets cranky. And when she gets cranky, it gets ugly. 
just hit that light. But you forgot the bottom for it. I don't want to wing it at you. Come here, ready? Frisbee. Oh, that looks good. All right. You I'm like, look like a girl. I'm going to hit you like a girl in a minute. I'm going to hit you everywhere until I find your kidney. All right. So, chili powder, which I don't really have. So here, I only realized I had only that much. And normally, you're supposed to use like three teaspoons of it. Ready to catch? Good job. Um, so, I'm going to make some. I've got some chili flakes. And I'm just going to use a little bit here in my little mortar and pestle. This is helpful for making meth or cooking. I'm just kidding. We don't make meth. No. We just make bad decisions. Just kidding. We don't do that either, do we? I don't know. I'm just talking. So I'm going to grind this up a little bit in here just to break it up a little bit. Obviously, it's not going to be ground up the way it would be into a powder, but this recipe also calls for cayenne pepper. Um, and I got enough other things. I like a big, broad, bright flavor profile when I do stuff. I also put more garlic than the recipe calls for because, well, I just believe in using a lot of garlic. So the, the technical recipe is three tablespoons. That to me is not enough because look how little that is. That's like one, two, and I got another container over here, don't worry. Almost three. Almost three. Okay. That's three. That's not enough garlic powder to me because it's just not. So I always add more. And I look at the heap, you know? So I don't, as you guys know, I don't really measure stuff like that. So onion powder is another thing that it calls for. And it again calls for three tablespoons. Um, this one I would actually, is the only thing that really, really stick to the right amount because the garlic powder can get really overwhelming. I'm sorry, onion powder, not garlic powder. The onion powder to me can get really overwhelming. Um, so I just tend to, that one I really stick to. Um, I might go a little, like a hair over, but I don't, I don't add any extra, really. Um, this lid is warped, so be careful. Ready? Okay. So, <laughs> um, so now we're gonna add the cayenne pepper, which is over here. So, the cayenne pepper is two teaspoons. Um, I like to add a little bit more than that. Um, for some reason, a long many moons ago. Actually, when we did our first hog, we lost the one teaspoon thing somewhere. I don't know where it went. So I have to use the half teaspoon. And I'll go a little over on this, like heaping. Because Frankie likes a little bit of heat. Okay. So I get a little over. Um, yeah, doubled it. Yeah, whatever. Mama likes it spicy. So, Chuck, <laughs> we ready? We can go with that one. Ready? Good. Okay. So, and it calls for four tablespoons of salt. I don't do that much salt. I'll put like a pinch in here. I don't like salt. Um, they, these two like salt. I don't do salt. I'm not a big fan. So I literally, I'll do about that much. About just the inside of my palm. Just a dash. I do not, no. This is going to be weird throughout. Okay. So here's the other things that I'm going to add, and I'm going to add a little bit of turmeric, and this one I'm going to shake out because I'm not going to add like a ton, um, but I am just not cooperating, so we're going to open up the back hatch. Open it up the back hatch now, boss! How about that? And I'm going to put a couple capfuls in there. Turmeric has a lot of really good health benefits. Not that it really matters in this dish because it's not like the healthiest dish because we just put two things of brown sugar in here. But whatever, it adds flavor too. It's got a good good scent. I'm gonna add a little bit of cardamom, just a little bit. There wasn't much in here, so we're just gonna polish it off. Uh, cardamom is cool. It's like a for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's a good way to describe it. It's sort of like an earthy 
slightly like makes you want to think of cinnamon, but not, and it's got like a like a bite to it, kind of almost like a, the way a curry would, but um, but not. So I'm gonna actually add a little bit of ground nutmeg as well. I like to add nutmeg to a lot of things, and I know it sounds weird, but it was something that I used to watch a lot of cooking shows when I first had Frankie. Um, and I used to watch a lot of Rachel Ray, and she puts nutmeg in everything, and I was like, hmm, interesting, and it's like the bomb, I'm telling you, if you add nutmeg to like your pasta sauces, it kicks it up a notch, like it gives it like a little different, um, something, something, and, um, there's a little ground coriander I'm going to add as well, not a lot though, just for funsies, okay, so then, now you know what my real trick is going to be, getting to put all this away. This is going to be my real trick. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. I know. Girl can dream. So, obviously you want to make sure you mix this up, which of course I forgot to grab like a, a fork. But watch this. It's like Santa's magic sack. So, <laughs> now I can mash up that brown sugar. Because you know how brown sugar gets a little, little clumpy. you got to smooth it out. And really you want to mix up these spices. Um, we're going to be getting our hands dirty in a minute, but just really want to mix these all together. And I don't know if you can smell it over there, Mike, but man, it smells good. And this is a pretty standard, other than the things that I added afterwards that I told you were add-ons, like the cardamom and the turmeric and all that and the nutmeg. Everything else is kind of a standard. So with the main ingredients, um, it's pretty standard as far as, you know, your basic rub recipes. I think the things that really make it stand out are, you know, the little touches that you add when you're cooking, things that you have from around your farm or your place, your garden, or just different flavors that you like or that your family likes um, to kind of add it in. And get this all mixed and broken up together. Let's so get this all mixed up. It's looking pretty good. So. Now, now we take a break. This is a union break, scheduled union break. All right, so I know this seems weird. Some of you who have rubbed a lot of meat, I know, dirty, but some of you have done a lot of barbecuing and done a lot of rubs on your meat may be familiar with this technique. I was not when I first ran across this recipe. I was like, yellow mustard, rub it on there first. Are you crazy? I was like, there's no way, that's going to taste so gross, why would you do that, it's not a hot dog. Like I went through this whole like, you know, diatribe in my head of how crazy it was to rub mustard, plain yellow mustard on here, but it works. So, and you don't really taste it, it just kind of works as like a binding agent. It rubs the lotion on the skin, puts the lotion in the basket. So, we basically... This is a great part to have your kids help you with, by the way, if they're so inclined to get messy. I like to use this little um, silicone spatula um, to kind of really get it all over the edges. Um, I'll get in there with my hands in a minute, but I kind of just like to get a good layer of this on first. And I'll do each side separately, which usually you'll see by the end of this. This mustard will be mostly used and the bottle will look disgusting because I'll have been rubbing that on here and getting it all over the mustard container. So I usually end up um, having to wash everything afterwards, <laughs> including the bottle. So I get this all rubbed on here. So I'm going to do each side separately. I'm starting out with the back side of one and the front side of the other, depending on what you consider the back or the front of the ribs how you're looking at things. Is the glass half empty or is it half full? Who knows? All right, so I forgot to grab a spoon, which is okay. So I'm gonna sprinkle it on and then I kind of pack it in to this layer of mustard. And just really, you wanna completely cover um, every part of it. So that's why too, sometimes it'll seem like, oh wow, that's a lot of rub for these ribs if you're only doing a couple racks, but um, it's really not because it, it does, it gets used. 
you're gonna you're gonna be patting it in. You want it to stick and really cover them completely to get the desired effect for this particular kind of rub for ribs. Um, I much prefer doing these this way versus a barbecue sauce. And I find that um, it actually, because of the sugar and because of the way it cooks, and I'll be curious to see how this turns out with the way that the barrel house cooker, uh, the way that the moisture drips down onto the coals and circulates back around. So it doesn't break, it, break up and fall off. And what does kind of come off um, is okay because in this barrel house, in the theory of it, you know, adding flavor to the smoke, that's fine. It's not going to be a big deal, but it's not going to break off in chunks. It's going to stick to this. Um, I don't know how else to describe it other than once you do this rub, you'll kind of, you'll be like, oh, I see how it sticks and how it kind of creates its own thing. And I typically like to do this rub at least the morning of if I'm barbecuing later that evening. If I can, sometimes I'll do it the day before to really let it sit in that rub before I cook it and then take it out and let it come up to room temperature a bit before we throw it on the heat. I did let this meat come up to room temperature. However, we butchered birds all day yesterday, did not have a chance to make the rub. We knew we wanted to do a video on it today, so I, I won't be letting this sit and really stick to it the way that I would typically like to, um, but that's okay. Um, it really is. So this is the great thing about this too. <clears throat> So doing one side at a time, you can see just from doing the front and the back of one set, this is what's left, right? Doesn't look like enough, but Mike's worry about it not sticking onto there. So obviously I did pat it on thick, but this is how we really get it in there. So I'm gonna flip it over onto here. That's what fell off, okay? Now I'm gonna flip this here. I'm gonna do the inside of the ribs. This is what I was talking about, it, the container getting really messy. Now I'm gonna do this side. And I'm going to do that with that one as well. And it's really going to stick. You will see. And you really, you want to make sure you get all these little end caps. Don't leave anything uncovered. You really want to cover every portion of it with the rub. Like, don't just do the front and the back. Like, do the sides. Do the whole thing. Like, don't skip because you'll be mad at yourself later if you did. See, and all this that fell off the sides. It's going right back in there. Some of this got mixed in with the mustard, but that's quite all right. And you're just going to press it in, and what falls off is going to fall off onto the next one. And you're just going to really press it in. I know, I know I'm going to get comments about like I was actually kind of glancing at the recipe because normally the last time, I can tell you, the last time I made this, I did not look at the recipe, I just made it. Um, this time, the only reason I pulled up the recipe to actually show you guys a little bit was because I know a lot of you have been asking about specific um, like ingredients and how much and this and that that I do for my brides and that and I, the answer is I honestly don't know because I don't measure. I don't. I like, I don't believe in it. There you have it. <laughs> so now we're going to do the other side. See the extra that's going to come off right onto that other rack? See, now I can look for holes. I know this sounds like super tedious, and it's not really, but I just like to make sure that everything gets covered because I'm telling you, when it makes that crust on here, turns into its own. You hear the peacocks, you guys? I don't know if you heard that. They sound like geese right now. So, then we're gonna flip this like that. Now we're gonna do the back side of this one. And obviously, the more that you do, the messier it gets. But that's kind of the fun part too. And it smells amazing. I love peacocks. Do you hear the chirping behind me? We have an incubator right now behind me that has turkey poults hatching in it. So I've got a blue slate that hatched out and two midgets in there. Two midgets that were in assist birth last night. I had to assist. I was doing Lamaze breathing with them and giving them ice chips. No, I'm just kidding. I wasn't. I just basically peeled the shell off of them because they were stuck. But, so. 
They're alive because of me. Because <laughs> they were not going to make it. It had been like, well, it had been like, I don't know, 40 hours or something since those eggs piped and they were dried onto the turkeys. I'm going to be getting this. This is the problem. It's towards the end. You will find that your hands are getting a little bit gummy, but that's okay because this is why we do this system. Because that all that loose powder that still hasn't touched anything, see, there is a system to my madness. And then you can dip it right into those end caps. Do you see how I did that? Do you see that? That's right. Just like that. I got your Rachel Ray right here. I got your emerald right here. Anyway, so these gorgeous, 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 gorgeous ribs are now ready for the barbecue. I'm ready to go finger paint something. 